You know, I really appreciate what Wilbur said earlier uh, about safety. Um, but I was thinking about that to a degree. And, and while I respect the sentiment and I can appreciate it, how can I be safe on a land where 90% of my people have been systematically exterminated? We're going to talk about it a little bit later, but there is... And that's what I have been experiencing. I, I had that story yesterday about, you know, Gracias a Dios, la tierra, la la luz. I spent yesterday moving for the... But that's where I do think about it. And we'll talk about it in a minute or not, but... The moment I was kicked out of the womb, love you, mommy, peace, and I got sent to an orphanage. And then six months later, I got shipped up here to Minneapolis. This physical body has never known safety until last night. Very, very seriously. Because now when I want to go exercise, I don't have to subject myself to the public. I can go downstairs to the gym. When I want to go do my laundry, I don't have to go out my apartment. There's so many different things that we really, really, many of us are privileged to experience. And, and again, so when we talk about safety, I personally believe that, again, just like you can't teach diversity, you can only experience it. That's where we'll kind of get into some other stuff, maybe to a degree, and that's really over the overall tenor of the conversation. You're never going to know anybody. You're never going to know anybody else's experience. You're never going to understand it. Doesn't matter. Know yourself. Know your own triggers. Know when you can say, okay, I don't understand that. Maybe it's making me feel a way. So that maybe instead of saying, hey, well, we'll get into it. We'll, we'll get into it. Vamos pues. Si o no. Oh, my goodness. Where? Okay. How? Oh, I'm trying to. F why are you not like? There's where? a slideshow button up on the upper right. Yeah. And now I'm just trying to figure out where that. Where? Ah, my mouse is over there. I just had to figure out what was going on here. All right. So, uh, like I said, slideshow is. So I already said that. No, we're safe. Son of a gun. Blah, blah, blah. What are we trying to avoid? I don't want to shame, I don't want to guilt people, but this is the picture of a spineless, gutless, garbage individual whose tears mean absolutely nothing and their words mean nothing. And that's the scariest part because they'll speak a lot of words that people will believe and other people will follow, but it won't mean anything and at some point in time, it's his children and it's other people that have to pay the price for that because they're not going to be able to respect him. And that's just it. The biggest currency we have in this life is our own respect and dignity, personally. The other thing we're trying to avoid, and I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to name names because this is not about shaming people, but there was somebody who was very prominent. She was a prominent woman in the LGBTQA community, and she invited somebody to speak on anti-racism. But what she didn't understand is that when she said she was going to invite this person to speak on anti-racism, she was basically telling all LGBTQA and trans people of color that they weren't welcome. You really want <laughs> Oops. These are the things that we are trying to avoid. Very, very much so. Has anybody ever heard the concept of understand versus overstand? I kind of want to, this is kind of, I, I want to kind of hit some basics. This is where we get into semantics. This is where we get into language and how language is so important. I understand you. Okay, so that means that you're looking up. I overstand. I can see, and, and the difference is that we can go back to Fry. Fry understands what people are going through. I understand we're going to do... No, you don't understand. When you overstand, I can see the consequences. I see what's happening. I see what's happening with your group. I see how it's being affected by others. I can, I can understand the situation in context. And that's not something... Again, that's where... It's like Socrates said, the only thing we can understand is our own ignorance. 
I understand the limits of my context. And, and so that's where you can better listen to others instead of saying, oh, I understand what you're saying. Oh, you understand what I'm saying, do you? If you overstood, then maybe you would put more importance on what I'm trying to say. So that was the one thought I want to put there, because, oh, yes, who am I? I am, I am a brown indigenous orphan bastard. Now there's some Latinos and our, 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 our dearest former sheriff, Richard Stanick, who maybe don't think I'm brown, but I'll leave that up to kindergarten and a color wheel for y'all. <laughs> but again, this will, we, we can get into this stuff later because it is important, and this is where language has an effect. Um, indigenous will get into that because there are people that would be frustrated that I would identify myself as that, and I would be frustrated if I identified as that if I didn't have some very, 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 very specific connections. We're talking names. We're talking Gracias a ella, Celedonio and his wife, Martina, Martina made this. And we'll talk about why this bag is important, maybe later. But, so, and then I'm a bastard. I don't know who my dad is, but my, my mom, let's, let's also just kind of reverse that. About seven or eight years ago, I found my biological mom, sister, and family. And also that's one of those things where like, when I met my sister, my sister was like, would you be willing to take a blood test? But you're exactly like mom. Because that's the thing, my mom and I are the same. And that's also why I can identify happily, uniquely, as a brown indigenous orphan bastard. Because, well, we get into it. Gracias a ella. Um, okay, next of all, ooh. I had, okay. So we all know the term red flag. What's a red flag? Oh my God, red flag, what's a red flag? Red, red, forget that shit. Red light. And that's in my conversations I want to have what we can call like a red light conversation. What that means is that maybe there's something kind of a warning. It's not something bad, but something's happened. We've got to pay attention to it. And this is, this is where we're going to come to understand and overstand. Because this is something that one of my teachers taught me actually here at the university a long time ago. If you ever talk to somebody, hey, how you doing? Oh, please, by all means, whatever, whatever. Take a seat wherever you like. You can convene here. Um, it, how you doing? I'm fine. What does fine mean? Anybody know what fine stands for? Have you ever heard of that? Quentin May. My therapist used to say, it's like, you can't be fine. You don't feel anything. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> fine stands for fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> but now how do we take that information when somebody says you say how you doing oh, I'm fine now how do you take that information you say oh my god you're fucked up insecure neurotic and emotional how can I help or you overstand and especially in, especially in the workplace context do you overstand and say you want to know what? And this is where we all hope to get to the place. I can overstand that you may be going through something that I don't understand. So today I'm going to give you a little bit more space. If there's a little something extra that I can do to maybe, hey, you want to know what? Maybe let's move the meeting. Or, hey, I asked you to do something. I actually took care of it. Because we'll get into, again, there can be that Oh, now I understand what fine means. When you say you're fine, oh my God, let me like... Bro, settle down. <laughs> Let's just call the fuck down. Because again, well, well, we keep on moving. That was why it's like, eh, do I want to say that or not? I'm not exactly sure. But we said it. We got it done. Now we are getting into what I wanted to talk about and what I wanted to share. These are the two most important slides. And this is... Well, I go back to this. When I got arrested... I got, arrest, when I got arrested for the fourth, it was the fourth and the last, fifth and last time. Um, it was a curious little story. But when I sat in the back of the cop car, I was like, fuck this. I am not doing this anymore. I was in my pajamas. 
cop arrested me because I didn't have my identification on me. And I was like, you motherfucker. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I just got done making my daughter breakfast. And her mother came and wanted to take the kid. And now you're gonna arrest me in front of my kid? This is where I say it's easy. The only problems that I have with committing violence these days are legal. It scares me, because I don't like to be there. But we'll get into why in a minute in the next slide. Because when I got arrested, I said, hey, you wanna know what? I'm messed up, I'm mentally unstable. Put me in solitary and give me a pencil. And I have four white walls and a pencil. And I just made a timeline of my life. Born here, exited from mother's presence there, orphanage here, six months, I'm now in Minnesota. What happened between zero and five years of age? Wow, a lot, way too much. But that's a significant, now we're looking at psychology. We're looking at sociology. We're looking at human development. What happened between zero and five in somebody's life? That's a significant time developmentally. What happened between five and 12? What kind of lessons did one learn? And again, the two words that I want folks to focus on are, what were your privileges and what were your obstacles? And that's we go through each one of these timelines. What happened between 12 and 18? Then what happened between 18 and 25, 25 and 35, 45 and 50, 50, 75, after that, have fun, because Lord knows we earned it. <laughs> but again, being, we're, we're going to jump to the next slide and we'll see why, but for yourself, what did you experience during these periods of your life? Because we're going to start to see that now when we observe others, we can use this as a structure to say, how did you become who you are? How did you become the person that I'm interacting with right now? Or else you can say you're going through something that I don't understand. Now I have a better understanding of where some of these things might have happened. So I'm not going to look at you and say, oh my God, how can I do this? When you're ready to have a conversation, I'm ready to listen. And when I listen, I have a better understanding of what I'm listening for and what I'm hearing. So that now again, well, we'll get into, let's, let's go to the next slide. Because, well, let's see here, is it, oh my goodness, oh, okay, yes. Has anybody ever heard of the man named Khalil Gibran? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, if you have not, bless his heart. He has written some of the most beautiful words. The one word that he wrote, and I don't have a tattooed on me yet, but I will get it, is where he says, work is love made visible. But that's where I love this line, and, and what, what I never understood was wisdom that pursues senility. What does that mean? I know that it doesn't look like it, but I'm 40 years old. I am set in my ways. There are some certain things that, pff, fuck, it just ain't gonna change. <laughs> You know, I got a pirate's mouth, and, and that's senility, but also me embracing that with compassion. Okay, these are my ways. This is, I look at the timeline of my life, and this is where, I mean, I guess I will say, and I was gonna say, well, we'll, 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 we'll get to actually, I think, here in the next slide. And so, yeah, I, I wanted to share that. So, I mean, just, get, and, and please, take a look at Khalil Gibran. This comes from a poem that maybe we can take a look at at the end. I can search for it. But it's called My Countrymen. And it is beautiful and fascinating. And I encourage everybody, especially now, to take a look at it. We'll take a look at it in a minute, though. Anybody ever heard of what's called the five aggregates? Buddhism. Uh, Buddha, five aggregates, five senses. Sigh, I'm not going to go up, no. Anyways, but then he says, are we any of the five senses? No, we are not. We, as the conscious being, exist separately outside of those five senses. Canon, why are you talking about all this craziness? Oh my God, I don't get it. So this is what I came up with. Remember the timeline that we had? Zero to five, five to 12, 12 to 18, so on and so forth. Okay, so now 
What did the physical self go through on that timeline? What did the mental self go through on that timeline? What did the emotional self go through on that timeline? And then I want to extract that and I want to say that our thinking person, that spiritual aspect, is really the aggregate of what happened and what, what, what all those things went through. Because that's the thing. I look the way that I do. But my physical experience was growing up in the western suburbs. Going to the number one traditional school in the state. So that was, that was my mental. But then what was my emotional entering a place where I was always... I, in my high school, my nickname was Blackie. Oh, don't worry, folks. They're wealthy and they're smart and they're in positions of power. So we're good. <laughs> but again, but, but also, but, but I mean, and, and I'm just, I'm just going to say it. And, and thank you for joining. But also, I want to say this. <sighs> um, I mean, again, it's the French know it. Everybody knows it. The only culture in America comes from black people and comes from black culture. And there's a lot of people that are consistently trying to imitate it. And there's also a lot of people who feel obligated to try to imitate it because their physical self grew up in the same place that I did. But psychologically, they're being pressured to be something else. But then all of a sudden, you're able to be friends with them and you're able to say, I have a diverse friend. But I mean, I'm just, I, I had another sticker where it's just like when I look at like Kamala Harris and all that kind of stuff. It's just genocide 2.0. She's anti-trans. She's anti. She's a cop. Well, what's Tim Walsh? You know. And what was her physical, mental, and emotional upbringing on that timeline to make her the way that she is? Because as I said, this isn't about guilting and shaming. This is about understanding. And and that this is really. This is the crux of what it is that I wanted to convey. Is that system, that timeline, of being able to divide who you're observing and understand we are all humans. And we've all had this development that's happening that has shaped us in different ways. And we look, and I said, it's that timeline. And you break it down and you say, what were the obstacles and what were my advantages? Because again, as I said yesterday, it's a privilege to do this. Why am I here? Because I got adopted into one of the wealthiest suburbs in the fucking world. I make more money in a day. I am making more money being here. My uncle probably made fuck all month, maybe half the year. You know? And, and so... With all of that, and, and, but I was given this education that allowed me to be able to come up with these ideas where I am now sharing them with you. And I am able to. And that is, that is because I did a lot of emotional work. <laughs> <laughs> because again, like I said, that's where after 40 years, I am now able to have a little bit more calm about very much saying that, like, what shifted for me, and this is kind of on a personal thing, is, is uh, it was the uh, December 1988 issue of National Geographic. I was about four and a half years old. It was the 88 or the 89 issue, the holographic issue. And, and I opened it on up, and, and it was the first time in my life that I ever saw anybody who looked like me. And they were a tribe from northern Brazil, borderline, border of Colombia. And, and because, because I think, because that, and, well, yeah, this is the start of a conversation that I'm hoping to have with Minneapolis. And thank you, Drupal, thank you all for, for joining me in this conversation, because that's where we're going to move to this now, um, because 
Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yes! I had already said, here's an example. I mean, again, to think of the admixture. And, and this, because this is just the beginning of these complexities. What was somebody's family structure? When did that family structure change? What was the structure of the grandparents under which the parent was raised? You know? I mean, it's... I, I'm not going to get in my life because it's fun. Trust me, I'm going to write something eventually someday. Uh, because there's 2000, 2005, uh, baby girl was pregnant. And we were chilling in our apartment. We were chilling in our apartment. And her dad was in the basement of Saddam's palace in Baghdad with two other guys writing word for word what President George Bush said in the 2005 State of the Union address about what was happening in Iraq. And so again, that's where, for myself, sometimes it can be a lot to hold. You know, and that's, you know, but that's where again, so that's where, yeah, anyways, anyways, I think, are we, oh yes, okay, so I was gonna talk about sexism really quick. Ah uh, yes, I wanna go through this. Um, sexism. I don't mean to be mean or anything like that. I don't want to be mean. But as I had said regarding safety, <coughs> white women have always been a threat. Sometimes more so than white men. And I didn't want to use the example, but take a look at Emmett Till. That was a white woman that lied. And what did men do when that white woman lied? Overcompensated for the lie and did so for decades afterwards. So, and, and that's where again, and, and we have to look at how a lot of stuff is changing. Remember when I talked about the LGBTQA woman who invited somebody to talk about anti-racism, but invited somebody who's anti-trans. And it's really, really difficult and it's not fun. And that's where again, we pull back to understand ourselves and understand our own triggers. Because the world is full of triggers and it's not emptying anytime soon. Um, one thing I want to say about racism is the idea is, and this is the fascinating, because down in Colombia, when you go down in Colombia, Latin America, everybody, we're not racist. There's no racism here. Everybody's allowed at the country club. They just need to have money. Because the idea is that money enables you to transcend your race. And to a degree, that's why I have tattoos on my face these days. That's why I'm going to continue painting my nails, and that's why I'm going to continue to dress the way that I dress and be who it is that I want to be. Money is not going to change who I am. And if it does, I will kill myself. Because again, we just have, we, we, the reason we have these systems and we reduce them to something simple is because we live in a very complex world. And we just need to start being able to make the point is to start making a little bit of sense of it so that we can have a little bit more confidence. And then when we can act with confidence, we can start to really learn. Because we know that our mistakes are genuine. We have a, a solid sense of where we're trying to go. And we say, I'm trying to get there. I, 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 I understand that might be a mistake might be a stumble, but this is the direction I'm trying to go, and I understood the mistake I made. I understood where my misperception was. Um, and then, every, anybody heard of ableism? We've heard of this, okay? These, this is the invisible stuff. And, and really, this, and well, let's just go to the next slide. Uh, folks heard the word power dynamics? Cool, cool, cool. I think what all this reduces down to me is how do you want somebody to treat you when you're having a bad day? How do you treat someone when they're having a bad day? You know, is it, hey, we still got to get stuff done? Or is it, let me know when you want to talk about it. You're an adult. I'm an adult. We got some deadlines. We can move some of those deadlines if we need to. Let me know. You know, um, because I really, I think this stuff can be simple. It's about being human. But it's about understanding ourselves as a human being, as a psychological, physical being who has gone through a series of development and has these specific components that compose how we act, how we enact what we've experienced. Oh my goodness, that's it, we're done. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs>
Any questions, thoughts, reflections, please, please. That was a point. Time for conversations. Or, yeah, anybody. Don't worry about it. We're good, we're good, we're good. Um, all right, all right. Can I exit this? All right, all right. Should we do? I, I, I want to go back to your, um, when you ask somebody how you're doing, mm -hmm. they say fine, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's... It, that's one of those times when you can never take anyone at their word, right? It's like, okay, you don't want to tell me how you're doing, that's fine. <laughs> but I think that's an invitation for you to ask another question and then start to explore how they're doing, right? And and look at their eyes, look at their look at their mm -mm, no. bo body language, right? I actually disagree. I think that that's yeah. a that's a that's a that's a cue to say when they're ready, they'll tell me how they're doing. Sure. Because again, it's it's one of those things. Like it, it's because I think that that's where the other thing I want to go back to is 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 that um, it can be. I, I don't want to get into the details of it right now, but the lack of safety, just the genuine, sincere, intrinsic. I almost want to say internalized lack of safety. You know, I mean, when that dude was saying, hey, I'm going to call the cops, I understood what he was doing. I also understood the place that he was coming from. And I realized I can push back or I could try to reason with him. I could try to talk to him or I could not. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's where I think, especially in the workplace, too, it's one of those things where it is we go back to the Tao. And we say doing nothing is doing everything to a degree. Recognize it. Now be a safe space for that conversation. You know, maybe continue. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Cool. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Cool. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Cool. Hey, how you doing? I'm struggling with something. They needed to say they're doing fine. They needed to struggle with it. They needed to have that safe place where they could feel safe to be insecure. And then eventually they come to you and they say, hey, I'm, you know, this, that, or the other. Instead of approaching people, because I think that's it. It's, it's almost, you know, uh, there's, there's a, a wonderful individual named Vince Staples who had said, you know, he doesn't like to give gifts. He doesn't like to receive gifts. Because when you give a gift, it's always you're expecting them to be appreciative. Same thing with the white savior, you know, it's, and, and so that's where, uh, okay, let's see, should we, well, I'm not gonna, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, sh oh, crap, I, can't, I just wanted to share this, why are you making it so difficult? Um, oh my goodness, it's beautiful, oh my goodness, should we do this, should I read this for y'all, can I read this, okay, let's see, but I got to, oh, gun of a son, it's so difficult right now, though, but, because I, I need this to be right. Oh, my goodness. There we go. I love this. What do you seek, my countrymen? Do you desire that I build for you gorgeous palaces decorated with words of empty meaning? Or temples roofed with dreams? Or do you command me to destroy what the liars and tyrants have built? Shall I uproot with my fingers what the hypocrites and the wicked have implanted? Speak your insane wish. What is it you would have me do, my countrymen? Shall I purr like a kitten to satisfy you? Or roar like the lion to please myself? I have sung for you, but you did not dance. I have wept for you, but you did not cry. Shall I sing and weep at the same time? Your souls are suffering with the pangs of hunger. Yet the fruit of knowledge is more plentiful than the stones of the valleys. Your hearts are withering from thirst, and yet the springs of life are streaming about your homes. Why do you not drink? Am I cool? Oh, it's so good. Balancing between the both screens here, it's super fun, trust. The sea has its ebb and flow, the moon has its fullness and crescents, and the ages have their winter and summer, and all things vary like the shadow of an unborn god moving between earth and sun. But truth cannot be changed, nor will it pass away. 
why then do you endeavor to disfigure its countenance? I have called to you in silence of the night. Of the of the night to point out the glory of the moon and the dignity of the stars. But you startled from your slumber and clutched your swords in fear, crying, Where is the enemy? We must kill him first. At the morning tide, when the enemy came, I called to you again, but now you did not wake from your slumber, for you were too locked in fear, wrestling with specters, wrestling with the processions of specters in your dreams. I said to you, Let's see. How we doing, specters of the dreams? There we go. And I said to you, and I said unto you, let us climb to the mountaintop and view the beauty of the world. And you answered me, saying, In the depths of this valley our fathers lived, and in its shadows they died, and in its caves we were, they were buried. How can we depart this place for one which they failed to honor? And I said to you, let us go to the plain that gives its bounty to the sea. And you spoke timidly to me, saying, the uproar of the abyss will frighten our spirits and the terror of the depths will deaden our bodies. I loved you, my countrymen, but my love for you is painful for me and useless to you. And today I hate you. And hatred is a flood that sweeps away the dry branches and the quavering houses. I have pitied your weakness, my countrymen. But my love for you is painful to me and useless to you. And today I hate, uh, blah, blah. I have pitied your weakness, my countrymen, but my pity has but increased your feebleness, exalting and nourishing slothfulness, which is vain to life. And today I see your infirmity, which my soul loathes and fears. I have cried over your humiliation and submission, and my tears streamed like crystalline, but could not sear away your stagnant weakness, yet they removed the veil from my eyes. My tears have never reached your petrified hearts, but they cleansed the darkness from my inner self. Today I am mocking your suffering. For laughter is a raging thunder that precedes the tempest and never comes after it. What do you desire, my countrymen? What do you wish for me to show you? The ghost of your countenance on the face of still water? Come now and see how ugly you are. Look and meditate. Fear has turned your hair gray as the ashes, and dissipation has grown over your eyes and made them into obscured hollows, and cowardice has touched your cheeks that now appear as dismal pits in the valley as death has kissed your lips and left them hollow as autumn leaves. What is it you seek, my countrymen? Let's see, I want to make sure. Uh, 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 uh. Cool. Bueno, 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 bueno. bueno. What is it you seek, my countrymen? What ask you from life who does not count any longer you among her children? Your souls are freezing in the clutches of the priests and sorcerers. Your bodies tremble between the paws of despots and shredders of blood. And your country quakes under the marching feet of the conquering enemy. What may you expect even though you stand proudly before the face of the sun? Your swords are sheathed with rust and your spears are broken and your shields are laden with gaps. Why then do you stand in the field of battle? Hypocrisy is your religion, and falsehood is your life. Nothingness is your ending. Why then are you living? Is not death the sole comfort of the miserable? Life is a resolution that accompanies youth, a diligence that follows maturity, and a wisdom that, senil a wisdom that pursues senility. But you, my countrymen, were born old and weak, and your skins withered, and your head shrank, whereupon you became as children, running into the mire and casting stones upon each other. Knowledge is a light enriching the warmth of life, and all may partake who seek it out. But you, my countrymen, seek out darkness and flee the light, awaiting the coming water of the rock, and your nation's misery is your crime. I do not forgive you your sins, for you know what you are doing. Humanity is a brilliant river, singing its way and carrying with it the mountain secrets onto the heart of the sea. But you, my countrymen, are stagnant marshes infested with insects and vipers. The spirit of the sacred blue torch burning and devouring the dry plants and growing with storm and illuminating the faces of the goddess. But you, my countrymen, your souls are like ashes 
in the wind. Scatter upon the snow, which the tempest dispersed forever in the valleys. Fear not the phantom of death, my countrymen, for his greatness and mercy will, will refuse to approach your smallness, and dread not the dagger, for it will decline to be lodged in your shallow hearts. I hate you, my countrymen, because you hate glory and greatness. I despise you because you despise yourselves. I am your enemy, for you refuse to realize that you are enemies of the goddesses. Khalil Gibran uh, grew up in Lebanon. And again, that's the Fertile Crescent. That's where there's just so many. Check out his anthology. He writes in English, French, and Arabic. Fascinating stuff. But then in the uh, early 1900s, he emigrated here to the United States. And that's where I think we can see a lot of parallels with what he experienced, with what he wrote, and how it reflects to where we are in our present day. Um, and, and so, yeah, that is, uh, thank you for letting me read that. It's quite a bit, I understand. Uh, but, um, gee whiz. Thoughts, questions, comments? I don't know, you just, yeah. I thought it was, you can really feel that anger. I mean, obviously, he was a lot of his hates, and the imagery was great. But I, the stagnant of the people he was describing, how it's like you can be more, but you just want to be stagnant. And even worse, you know this is what you want to be, and you know that there are things you're missing, but you still choose not to have it. I think that was really interesting. Yeah. The, the, the things he does with words, um, this, is, this, is one of, this, is, this is what I think folks, this is his book called The Prophet. And he goes through each of these topics and just kind of, uh, one of them um, definitely I'm big fan of is uh, Crime and Punishment, which is just, a f okay, look at that, come on now. Exactly. <laughs> when your spirit goes wandering on the wind, that you alone and unguarded commit a wrong unto others and therefore unto yourself. And that's where, again, the point is not to understand others. The point is not to say, I have a friend with this identity. I have a friend with this label. I know what they're going through. I know what they went through. It's totally like what you went through, isn't it? No, not at all. I understand my triggers. I, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Years ago, I worked at a club on over here, and there was, there was an individual who came in, they were cross-dressing. And there were some folks that kind of were just like, who, what's that? But it was really, really great because there was another gentleman there who was in the military and had done a bunch of other sh stuff, and he set the precedent of being like, I'm gonna talk to them. I'm gonna meet them. I'm gonna treat them like a human being. You want to look the other way, you're an idiot. And if we want to talk about who's the bigger man, let's not play that game. <laughs> I was in the military. Let's not play that game. And now, years later, being able to see that young man who had his mindset changed so very fundamentally at that time by seeing that example, and is now, you know, loves whiskey, loves rock and roll, you know, loves that whole life. But if somebody who is trans, somebody who's cross-dressing comes on in, he treats them the same exact way. And it is beautiful every single time. And that's where, that's where again, because he's able to understand that, what his trigger is. That's his trigger. It ain't got nothing to do with them people. And those people probably have some really funny fucking stories. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know, you ain't never going to hear them if you don't talk to them. You know, so anyways, I have no idea what time it is, but we good. Thank you all so very, very much. Yeah, nice to meet you. Press the red button. Oh, boy. <laughs>